All right. Morning, everybody. It looks like we're gathering a crowd. It's coming in slow this morning, but um, I just want to introduce Carl. Carl is the the owner of uh, Mattress Warehouse Utah, seven locations, um, 40 years industry experience as a rep, uh, consultant, and business owner. So appreciate Carl taking the time to, to tackle some sales training for us. He brought in uh, Mark Maxim, and I'll let him introduce Mark. Um, let me just give you a little quick uh, introduction of myself again first, because when I started my business, a mattress business, 15 years ago, I quickly realized that because of the comfort exchanges, uh, that I had to get better at getting the customer the right mattress. And so, and so what I did is, uh, you know, looked at, okay, what do I need to do? And, and, and started to develop some plans. Um, and then I got with Mark Maxon, uh, who's been a friend of mine now for uh, 15 years, I guess. And uh, I got with Mark and, and, uh, and we put together a, a program, a process, a plan that will, that helps our customers get the right mattress and get less returns and uh, and then through our process, we've just expanded that and done so much more. Um, but Mark's been uh, 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 only in our industry for as long as I have. But Mark's been in the in the sales and training uh, mm -hmm. business. He's been with the top uh, uh, fifty Fortune, uh, you know, top Fortune five hundred companies, top fifty Fortune five hundred five <laughs> Fortune fifty companies. There it is. Uh, and and with his experience in in sales training and in putting this together, we were able to, and this is, I started, it was just me selling on the floor. And, and, and with Mark's help, we have brought that in and made that a process and, uh, and done it so we can nail it and scale it and done everything so that we could put that together. And Mark's been a major uh, implementer for me in this system as, as actually even been uh, recently has been even my general sales manager and, been an integral part of my company and the uh, and the um, training and and hiring and facilitating of these programs. And so I'm going to turn the time over to Mark now, and he can maybe give a little bit more because he's he is a, a, an awesome guy that's got a great experience, and especially in training and helping us. So, uh, Mark, go ahead. Well, thank you, Carl. Steve, thank you for the opportunity to be with you today, and hello, everybody. Good morning to you. Uh, let me give you a little further idea as, as to my background. Uh, I have been in sales for 42 years. Uh, I come from a retail background initially with Zale Corporation, at that time the largest jeweler uh, on the globe. And uh, through extensive training with their organization, uh, I became responsible for opening up uh, new locations. I was involved in uh, new location acquisition and uh, getting the store stocked, up and running, understanding the malls, understanding the demographic of the malls because it changes. Uh, I had a lot of fun with that, but uh, eventually I was recruited uh, to Monarch Life Insurance Company. I had a customer, ironically, that was a general agent for Monarch Life Insurance Company, and I was recruited by them, the youngest field underwriter that the company had uh, employed to that date, and I mean, I was young. I was out in the field, uh, had, had just turned 20 years of age. So if you take that into account, you go back to the retail experience. I started in retail uh, with a guild division of Zale Corporation at 16. And of course, they immediately recognized, you know, my extensive background and put me in the, the back room, uh, wrapping packages and polishing silver and cleaning uh, crystal, that type of thing. But I became very familiar with every level of retail sales from uh, incoming shipments, inventory, uh, and, and uh, also to uh, uh, you know, the sales end eventually when I got on the floor at age 18. I had a lot of fun with, um, with retail. Uh, personally, I found it to be fairly easy. Uh, you guys are in a, a product of necessity. Uh, we were dealing with a non-essential product, uh, as you can imagine, in the jewelry industry. Um, but when I got uh, transitioned over to the uh, insurance industry, that was a whole new learning curve, dealing with business-to-business, -business, key personnel insurance, and life and health. And at that time, at 20, I was out in the field working with people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s 
uh, and I'm going to say attempting to advise them how to implement the best strategies to protect their business in the event of the death of a key individual within that company. I eventually would go on to work with companies like CalFed Banking and then uh, in the end of my corporate run for the Fortune 500, Fortune 50 was GTE, GTE Directories. And all of these companies provided uh, phenomenal training. GTE, this goes back to uh, heavens, 1989. GTE at that time was investing, and this is how important training really is for any organization, whether it be management, owner, or whether it be uh, the individuals that are on the sales floor, your RSAs. Uh, GTE was investing back in those days $100,000 per candidate before you were allowed to get out in the field and work directly with your clients. And those clients could consist of attorneys, uh, they could consist of uh, medical practitioners, you name it, uh, jewelry retail stores. I dealt with all of them and it was a fascinating run. Let me tell you why they put such emphasis on training. A client for GTE, and again, this goes back 31 years ago, 30 years ago, a client could easily be worth $120,000 over the course um, of, of uh, a year, two years, because you were seeing these, um, these attorneys with multiple headings in their practice place full page ads, which would easily run, you know, a f for a full page, full color, $4,000 a month, $48,000 annualized. So if they had multiple headings, it added up quick. So you better be at the top of your game because you were working to help people uh, get off the fence and separate with a significant amount of money. And the only way to do that is to get somebody to believe in you, believe in your product, believe in your company. So there's a background on my training. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with Carl over the last 15 years. I want to give you an idea of some of the industries I've worked with because I want you to take what I'm going to share with you today very seriously. Uh, it is typical uh, for our organization, the Maxon Group, and you'll also find um, Maxon, markmaxon.com, which is my author page. It is typical for us to work with a company in the first 90 days, uh, and there's no exaggeration in this. You can see the testimonials for yourself, video recorded of uh, sampling of our clients that we've worked with over the years, sharing their own stories, but it's typical to experience a 25 to 50% increase in sales in the first 90 days. We're very systematic, we're very thorough, we discover your strengths and your deficiencies quite quickly through our discovery analysis, and as a result, we can make the appropriate recommendations that are going to help you achieve these types of increases. But I'll give you an example. I've worked with um, the automotive industry. A client of mine simply taking them from one location after 23 years, uh, they invited us in for 90 days. We worked with them for two years as a result of that invite. And in those two years, they were well on their way to increasing their locations and the diversity of the, the automotive lines that they carried. Uh, last count, they're at six dealerships today. Um, we accomplished that in, uh, let me think, uh, the first five, six years. Uh, after we started working with them, they went from one dealership, let me emphasize that, to six dealerships in that five, six year period. They took our strategies combined with their discipline and follow through and acquired a Hyundai dealership. This was a Chevrolet dealership, by the way, we started with. Uh, they they uh, acquired a Hyundai dealership and that Hyundai dealership they took to a 300% growth rate in the first 12 months. So those types of, of gains are possible. Again, let me emphasize 25 to 50% in the first 90 days is quite typical, but we certainly see those success stories, 100 plus percent growth inside of six months to a year. I've worked with uh, pre-need sales in the, um, um, the funeral home services. Uh, I'll give you an example, a company that had been operating for 55 years, multi-generational, and they invited us in to work with them. Now you'd think, wouldn't you, after 55 years, they would have all the answers. It was fortunate for them that they recognized nobody has all the answers, but if you work together as a team, you can achieve things like you never have before. They achieved, with our support and work and training in the first 12 months, a 65% increase in sales, taking them from 1.2 million in their pre-need sales division for one location to $2 million. Those are the types of success stories 
that we've achieved. Carl will tell you, and when you get to the maxongroup.com, that's M-A-X-O-N group.com, the maxongroup.com, you'll see Carl's testimonial there going a number of years back. And in our first couple of years together, we were achieving 50% growth rates year after year. And more recent years, it's been 19%, 29%, again, compounded year after year. So that gives you a little idea. Now let's talk about the issues that that uh, so many of you are facing out in the market, and that is, one, how am I going to get to a greater profit margin? How am I going to get to a greater bottom line as a whole at the end of the year with my business? Well, there's so many ways to get there. One is, as you look at the systematic process of selling, it is a step-by-step process. And when it's done right, you'll find that it has a strong formula behind it, and it's consistent, whether it's you as an owner being on the floor working with your customers, or a sales force, the important thing is that the, there's consistency in the customer experience. And that consistency is going to consist of a proper meet and greet. How that customer is being engaged from the moment they walk in the door or the moment they pick up the phone or they get on your website and they have an e-commerce experience. The consistency needs to be there. Then the next thing is, is showing that individual that you're different that you're unique, they have to believe that because as you know, they're shopping from business to business to business for your very product and they're encountering all kinds of experiences and a lot of people out there that you're competing with have the same products you do. Uh, They have map pricing just like you do. So why do they buy from you? Well, interestingly enough, there have been studies done on this. I attended a nationwide program a few years back, just in the last two or three years Nationwide had some very interesting statistics that they'd invested a considerable amount of money to derive. First is 35% of the customers out there do not put emphasis on price. They put emphasis on quality of product, the experience that they have. Those are the two key leaders for them. Uh, They put price, price can be relative, but it's gonna be down the line. Now, let's go to the 65% remaining of those customers. They are price driven, price is everything, and you're encountering them quite frequently. This is the interesting thing to note though, that 35% consumer base that places emphasis on quality of product and quality of experience, that consumer is responsible for purchasing approximately 96 to 98% of the major ticket sales in your market. Imagine that, those big ticket sales you're making, 96 to 98 percent of them are driven by 35 percent of the market now the exciting thing is when the market takes a correction and moves in the downward direction guess who continues to spend money it's that 35 percent not the 65 percent so i'll take you through a few examples of what's going to make a big difference with that customer when they walk in the door first the quality of your meet and greet the consistency of the experience And then you have to, again, convince them that you're different, you're unique. How do you do that? First, you tell them that you're unique. This is different. They came to the best mattress store. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to demonstrate that you're unique by conducting yourself in a different fashion from what your competitor is. I'll give you an example on that. When you introduce yourself, say, we're different, we're unique, I have a few questions for you. We consult for our prospective buyers because this is an important acquisition that you're making and we understand that. This is where you spend approximately a third of your life on a daily basis is on that mattress and it's going to determine how you're feeling the next day and in many instances how productive you are the next day. It can also address physical ailments that you may be experiencing. You guys know a lot of this and we've got it all outlined in what we call the Mattress Sales Mastery Module. And that module is in excess of two hours. It's very, very concise as to the recommendations that we make, very thorough. And it gives you the system that I'm describing to you today in great, great detail, right down to the discovery analysis that we recommend you make, uh, uh, you know, within the internal operation of your organization on a day-to-day basis. And that means once you introduce your unique, you're different, you lead your guests through discovery. But this is important. We all know how to ask good questions in our industry. But what makes a critical difference in the minds of your consumer 
is that you let them know you're going to document. You ask their permission. You know, it might be, Steve, you know, these are important questions that I'm asking you so that I can advise you from a consultant perspective. I can consult with you. All right. We're not here to sell you. We're here to help you and serve you. So if if you would give me permission, I'm going to document your responses because I learned years ago, the dullest pencil is better than the sharpest mind. And I want to make sure I'm giving you the best recommendations possible. I'm telling you the program works. We've got the numbers to prove it. So you have a discovery analysis in place. Now, this isn't just true for your industry. I'm going to tell you right now, I've I've transcended from one industry to the other over the 23 years I've been consulting and coaching and training. And it's, it's, as a matter of fact, I'll go back to that auto industry story for just a moment. I remember the founder, the founder's son asking me, he says, Mark, we've got Chevrolet behind you or behind us. We've got General Motors behind them. And we've been at this for 23 years. What in the world could you bring to the table? And I remember my response. I wrote about it in one of my books. Blake, I appreciate you asking that because that's a very good and it's a very valid question. Let me tell you, over the years, I've discovered, and this was back in the spring of 2001, I've discovered, and I'd only been in the industry for four years at that time, I had discovered that by working with numerous industries, we learned techniques and systems as we educated on a daily basis. We learned on a daily basis. And what I found is typically companies in an industry are chasing the leaders in their industry and they remain in perpetuity chasing those leaders. What happens with us is we learn techniques, systems and formulas that have been very effective in a specific industry. And we've learned when appropriate how those will cross pollinate into a new industry and their techniques and systems and formulas that you may never have considered. So subsequently, when our clients work with us, they expand their perspective and they're exposed to new solutions that they never considered before. And as such, they become leaders in their industry. Well, I guess Blake liked that answer because as I said, he invited us in for 90 days, kept us coming back for two years until he was well on his road and made those acquisitions and turn companies around through those acquisitions that led to 300% growth rates at a single store location. So I just wanted to give you some example on that. That discovery analysis is critical. I don't care what industry you're in. Otherwise, you're just shooting in the dark. It's like playing darts while you're blindfolded and you've been spun around a half a dozen times. A system gives you that consistency that's gonna, going to create that customer experience that's going to appeal to that 35% that have the discretionary money to buy those high-end products you have. Now, from that discovery analysis, you then become qualified in the eyes and the minds of that customer that's in front of you to make a recommendation. And your recommendation carries far more weight than your competitor up the street because you decided to, to move through a, a very quick, methodical process that's highly effective. Then we teach you right down to the verbiage, how to get beyond. Well, you know, I wanna thank you for your time today, Steve. You've been great. You know, like I told you when we first came in, we never make a decision the first store we dropped into. You've all heard that. Or, you know, we need to think about it. We need to talk about it. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure that this is the right product. We teach you how to overcome these specific smoke screens almost immediately up front in your original interaction with that customer so that at the end of the sale, you're not hearing from people anymore that they need to think about it, they need to talk about it, they never make a decision the first time. That is pretty much eliminated uh, consistently through the experience that you'll have with our program. Now, uh, I know at the same time you have customers that walk in your door um, they're looking for a mattress, but they've got five minutes. We teach you how to interrupt patterns. We teach you how to capture the, capture the attention of that consumer and do so very, very quickly. But I want to give you some meat and potatoes today that you can take away and use immediately in your business. Uh, first off, uh, one of the things that Carl and I accomplished together is we evaluated consistently as we move through the acquisition of locations. 
was this a good location? Location, location, location. We all know how relevant that is. That's a mantra in the real estate industry. But it's not just location. It's how visible, how visible is your location? I'll give you an example. There were two, two instances through our history together with Carl that we were able, when the property became available, to move a location uh, 50 yards, uh, 50 yards. In another instance, no more than 30 yards from the original location. But because of the positioning of those uh, uh, retail locations in those strip malls, we watch business jump quite significantly, 20, 25, even 30 percent. So that visibility makes a critical, critical difference in how successful you are in attracting traffic. Now, that's also applicable with e-commerce or an online presence and digital marketing in general. I've seen a lot of businesses out there that have failed to really, really make their presence known when it comes to searching for product. And I'm not just talking mattresses in general. I'm talking about if you're carrying name brand products like Tempur-Pedic, um, Serta, you know, uh, Sealy, uh, things like this. Temp what did I, uh, Intellibed, you know, if you've got name brand products with any recognition in your market, know this, the public in many instances are already educated. They have a neighbor that's talked about how great their new Tempur-Pedic is, or they have a family member, or they've talked to their physician, whatever it might be. They're not just searching for mattresses, they're searching by name brand. And when they search by name brand, your presence needs to be there, it needs to pop up. So you need a, a really good uh, social media, digital marketing company that's supporting you and stretching your dollar as far as possible and, and impacting the value of that dollar in those searches through PPC, that's pay-per-click with Google, for example, AdWords, making sure that you're popping up right away in the first one, two, or three of those ads, and that you're also showing well in maps, and that you're showing well in organics, because the more that consumer sees your name pop up in greater number of positions, the more credibility that you capture with that consumer in their mindset. It's just the way the public works. So that's another place where visibility becomes a major factor. You may not be in the position to make a physical change in your location at this point in time. You may not find it desirable, but if that opportunity comes about, it's something to seriously consider to maximize your visibility. But every one of you are in the position to be able to utilize digital marketing, AdWords and PPC to make sure that your presence is dominant when that consumer is searching for mattresses or a name brand, name brand product. Let's discuss something else that's, that's just really critical. And that is that discovery that I mentioned to you. Please don't kid yourself. I deal with arrogance in business all the time. And I know a lot of you are confident and I know a number of you have been in this business for a number of years. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna advise you that I've found that there's an old adage biblically, and I'm not wearing religion at the end of my sleeve by any means, but I'm gonna tell you there's some wisdom in this particular statement. And this statement or this particular scripture is that, um, oh my goodness, I lose that train of thought here for just a second. Um, the meek shall inherit the earth. That's what I was looking for. Well, the original translation of meek is teachable. Meek has nothing to do with timidity. All right. It has everything to do with teachability. And it makes sense when you take that into account that the teachable shall inherit the earth. Be open. Be open to new ideas. That's probably why you're here today. Let's take it to the next level and entertain some of the things that you're going to learn before we're out of time today. And then feel free to reach out to us. I'm going to share a couple of things with you. Um, we're going to have a winner today that Steve will be drawing. We're going to give away some books. And you'll have the ability to get them in electronic copies today and audio copies today. So those of you on the go don't need to worry about picking up a book and actually reading it. But this is my latest book that uh, just recently published, No Bullshit Selling. And uh, this is how to dominate your industry. There's no exaggeration in that. Very, very powerful book. Uh, many of the things, all the things actually I'm talking about right now are in here and so much more. And then this is the revised edition of my original publication back uh, in 2008. This is No Bullshit Success. 
and it's 12 coaching sessions. This is a 12 week program right here. And uh, I have been very successful charging significant money to clients to work with them one on one over the years, over a 12 week course for the very information that is accessible to you or what for the price of lunch for two. This is no bullshit success and it's 12 coaching sessions to shattering your limitations. Very, very powerful book. It's not for the faint of heart. It's going to require some, some work on your behalf. But there's an old adage where I come from in the gym, and that's no pain, no gain. I hope you'll agree with me on that. All right, so let's get into some other material. As I was moving through those steps, the meet and greet, the discovery process, having a good formatted discovery where you're, you've asked your customer to take some notes, what's that say to your customer? No one else has asked permission to document what they're sharing with you. And what that says to your customer is, one, these people truly care. All right, so now you're demonstrating what you've already told them. You're unique. You're different. By golly, they are unique. They are different. These people really care. And apparently what I'm sharing with them is important enough from their perspective to actually make note of it and document it. So how much more seriously do you think they take your recommendation over the individual they just met with up the street? And you notice I'm not saying compared to the one that they're going to meet with because we have people in Carl's company comfortably with high ticket items moving an 80% closing or conversion ratio. For every eight, 10 customers that come in, they're closing eight of them. There's no exaggeration on that. Company-wide, he's comfortably over a 50% conversion ratio. Why is this so important? You likely invest a considerable amount of money in advertising. Now, with Carl's seven stores, he has a very significant budget today that he's been able to allocate to advertising. But just a few years back, we did an intensive study on what his cost was for every individual that walked through that door. Are you ready for this? Every individual that walked through that door was a cost to him of approximately $45 to get that individual just to walk through the front door. Now, if he's at a 50% conversion ratio, he's actually paying $90 for every customer that actually buys from him. Now, how profitable do you think that is when you're selling a $119 mattress in a twin? No, there's no profit there. You're losing money. It's a loss leader to you. So the other thing that we needed to address was this. We needed to address the quality of customer that was walking through his door. The customer that was looking for the experience, not the cheapest price, but the experience. And one of the things we did over a matter of time as we got into our work is we changed his advertising. You see it out there all the time. You see it, uh, $8.99 for this queen mattress over Labor Day weekend. Right now, yours for $2.99. All right, so how many customers do you have to get through the door at $2.99 a unit at the end of the month, all right, to make your, uh, your payroll, your, your overhead in general? However, if you can bring in that customer by using the same dollar, the same dollar and appeal to the individual that is going to be looking for a mattress at 2000 or 3000 And this is something that I experienced very quickly in Carl's industry, your industry. And that is, as you're appealing to that lower ticket sale, that consumer that's looking for that lower ticket sale, you can bump them. But I think you all attest to this. Difficult to take that $299 mindset and put them into a $1,500 mattress. But it's pretty easy when you're doing it right to take that 1999 buyer and take them up to a $4,500 package. And we've witnessed it firsthand. It works. And we've got the proven track record um, that we can demonstrate that that's the case. So we're back at that step. Meet and greet, discovery. Now they're taking your recommendations seriously. The next step is teaching your people how to close how to close effectively, how to ask for that business, how to have established urgency and leverage that urgency. And through that discovery, we've also found the consumer's pain. We know what their urgency is. Even if they have in ur urgency, we're going to build on that urgency. How do you build on that urgency? Well, let's take a hypothetical here. 
about one in two customers walking in your door are in pain. 50% of the market have some ailment that they're suffering from. Now, obviously, we don't want to state to them that that new mattress is a cure-all for everything, but it certainly can make a difference for many. And we have the testimonials as an industry to demonstrate that. With that said, even though we've discovered their pain, that they have an ailment, the other ways that we can leverage industry is the urgency of a sale, that this product is on sale right now. Um, it's being offered by the manufacturer, the higher authority. We're passing it through to the consumer so that you're going to save money right now that a week from now, that's not going to be available to you. There's one way. Another way is limited inventory on hand. We only have so much in stock. We have X number of locations or even at my location, I may have three of these now, but I can assure you by the end of the day or by the end of the weekend, I'm not going to have any left. We've got to work on the urgency factor. So we take you through the closing process, and that's the problem with most, most RSAs. They fail to close, let alone attempt to close four, five, six times before that customer walks out the door. And we know, and you know, that if that customer leaves, they're not coming back in the healthiest number of circumstances. We've tested this. We've had the opportunity over the years to do the research firsthand. Now, I'm going to give you a little case and example on this. Years ago, when Carl and I first started this, we found that if we didn't close that customer on the spot, no matter how many times they promised they were going to come back, one in 10, maybe two in 10, best case scenario, ever returned. That simple. We took Carl's company from a 30, 35% company-wide conversion average to well over 50%. We then still watched for those that walked promising to come back, what was the return rate? Nothing changed. It was still 10 to 20% at best would return. Over the last number of years, this has been the difference in our experience. Again, having individuals on his floor with 80 plus percent conversion rates, which is pretty remarkable. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but as an industry standard, industry to industry, that's exceptional. You have to be very good at what you're doing and you have to have a good foundation to succeed like that with any consistency. Well, this is what we found. As we move from that low ticket, that $8.99 on sale this weekend or, you know, this week for the holiday for $2.99, we started advertising quality experience, quality products, high-end tickets. We were able to, um, in, in a short period of time, sell much bigger average ticket sales, much greater or better margins. Um, we were able to sell a lot more add-ons, get those foundations under those nice mattresses and uh, sheets and pillows and so the ticket built significantly over that period and as a result the gross margins that Carl's outfit was was experiencing. We didn't have to spend any more money to do this. It was redirecting our money going after the right fish. It's that simple. Um, once in a while you know you can be fishing in a body of water and you can, you can catch that big fish um, but unless you've got the right equipment and you're fishing the right area, uh, you're not going to see that consistently. So that's, uh, that's what we did. We made those changes in where he was directing his dollar, and we brought in that 35% of the market that had the discretionary money that were looking for a quality experience, and we gave them that Nordstrom experience. Now, if you look into Carl's company, the name of his company is Mattress Warehouse, Mattress Warehouse Utah, and Park City Mattress. Mattress warehouse would imply low prices, would it not? So there was an appeal in that, but at the same time, we educated our consumer that yes, we're value, but it's the Nordstrom's experience that you can count on. We stand behind our product. It's the best experience you can find anywhere. We truly care about our customers, and we demonstrate that by taking the time, and we demonstrate that by uh, by getting the information that allows us to give them the best recommendations they're going to receive anywhere. Now, let's take into account with this real quick. You may be saying to yourself, well, Mark, you know, if you say the time by taking the time. I got a lot of customers who walk in the door. They don't want to give me the time of day. 
Uh, they can be rude. They can be evasive. We teach you through our programs how to interrupt patterns and garner their attention and get them to cooperate like they never have before. There's a system to this. There's verbiage to this, as I keep emphasizing, and you're going to find it in our mattress sales match mastery module right down to the the smallest detail all right so again i know i keep emphasizing this process but i want you to have the proper meet and greet the right questions i wrote years ago in my first publication achieving excellence in life that the wisdom we seek is not contained in the answer it's contained in the quality of the questions we're asking and there's great truth to that you know, years ago when the Iron Curtain came down in the late 1980s between um, Russia or formerly the Soviet Union and the United States, for the first time our scientists had the opportunity to interact with the Soviet or former Soviet scientific community. And our scientists came away dumbfounded at some of the remarkable accomplishments this nation had made that we were unaware of. And they couldn't understand how they arrived at these solutions when we had failed to. And I'm sure that there was reciprocity in this. You know, it goes both ways. But what they learned was that the Soviet scientific community had been pursuing a different line of questioning than the United States or Western culture. Again, wisdom in the quality of the questions that we're asking. So that discovery unlocks the answers that you need now while you're in front of your prospective customer so that you can advise them, so that you can leverage the skills that we teach you, the formulas, the systems, and the verbiage. So when you finally get through the discovery to the recommendation, all right, and that's moving, of course, we, try, we start out with a three mattress process and that is finding their comfort level. We call it affectionately Goldilocks. Every customer can relate to that. Once we find their comfort level, we can narrow down about 75% of the inventory and lead them specifically to a selection of mattresses that we know through experience are probably gonna be appealing to them and find that perfect mattress so that we can also introduce the urgency, having introduced the solution and get their business today. So meet and greet, your discovery analysis form that contains quality questions that are going to give you the answers to make a great recommendation through a specific step-by-step -step recommendation process, understanding their comfort levels, and then moving forward to call to action. We also teach you the difference between a smoke screen and a real concern and how to overcome both scenarios and then move to that close and if necessary, multiple times. The interesting thing about it is through our program, you're gonna find you don't have to ask your customer to close more than one, two, maybe three times at the most. Most of the time, it's an assumptive close. It's natural and it's easy when you follow the right formula. Now this transitions from one industry to the other, all right? We may think we're unique in our industry, but I'm telling you effective sales processes or processes work from industry to industry to industry. I've worked with countless industries over the course of my career in training, and I've witnessed it firsthand. Go to the maxongroup.com, see for yourself the testimonial of a number of different individuals uh, in various industries that have experienced the same type of success Carl has. So there's our sales process, but we've got a lot more details for you. And, and we also explain to you why to follow the recommendations we're making. See, it's our job to convey to you and convince you why you want to make some of these changes. And if, if we don't do that, my attitude has always been, I've failed you. So we're going to teach you, you know, fundamentals on the back end that will get that customer to confide in you like they never have before. Never, ever do you want to be letting a customer go. When they say, hey, we just started our shopping. Well, you should have known that up front. And we're going to teach you how to know it up front with consistency every time, no matter which salesman they're in front of, because it's going to be documented. I can look at a discovery in any industry, and I'm going to tell you, most of them don't have one. And that's a failing. Right there, they're losing 20, 25 percent, if not more, of the traffic that's walking in their door that they could have, than, than they could have closed otherwise. 
I can look at that discovery once it's implemented and I can know where a sales associate's deficiency are, deficiencies are right away and in a number of instances, the majority of instances know how they could have closed that customer and how they failed to do so because they weren't following the protocol. Uh, let, let me go to a couple of other areas. We've talked about location, visibility, and that visibility is included through your digital marketing. Um, and if you can't locate or move to another store, you can always enhance your digital marketing and your digital exposure to the community. The other is how you're handling your advertising, where you're spending your money, what traffic you're pursuing, okay, what quality of traffic you're pursuing. Uh, the other thing that we talked about is the step of the sale, the consistency, the discovery. These are all things that combine to get you to that 25, 50% increase in sales volume. Um, it's going to lead to larger tickets, greater margins that you're, that you're capturing, and greater conversion ratios of the traffic that's walking through your door. So here's another example I see in the sales process all the time. And that is, if you're not doing your meet and greet the right way, and there is a right way, and most aren't. All right, and, and, and let me demonstrate this. If I had the opportunity to move through discovery with you today, as I do in live sessions, or I do in discovery analysis one-on-one -on -one with a prospective client, whether they be an owner or an upper executive within the company, I ask them specific questions as to what their behavioral patterns have been to date. I find out what's not working for them to date, what is working for them to date. What I find time and again is they're not doing much of what we advise or ultimately will end up advising them to do. And if they are, we're not right for them. And the reality of it is straightforward. We'd rather lose their business than do them a disservice. We don't do business with people that we can't achieve the success levels that I'm talking about. Once we've done a discovery, if we don't feel confident we're going to create this impact, we're not interested in doing business with you. And that's how we maintain the rep reputation that we do, because we do, get, we do get the success that I'm describing time and again. But the bottom line is, when I go in, if I were to just go in haphazardly and start making recommendations to your business, for example, and you might start telling me, well, I do this already. Or I've done that and it didn't work for me. There may be a reason it didn't work for you, by the way. And with a subtle adjustment, it would. All right. But you come to the conclusion quickly as a consumer, oh, you know what? They're not right for us. I call it the three strikes and you're out rule. Same thing's happening on your floor. If you're guessing about your customer, you're going to lose credibility with them. Through our process, you secure that credibility and your recommendation carries a significant amount of weight. We teach our clients how to become consultants, not salespeople. And that makes the difference with that 35% of the market versus the 65% of the market rule. Now, how important is that to you? How many mattresses do you have to sell at 299 to compare to one mattress at 5,999? There you go. There's your answer. 20 to one, 20 to one. And the interesting thing about it is those 20 mattresses that you sold could be a much greater headache to you than the one mattress you sold, and it's so much easier. Now, I'm not saying ignore the lower end market, but I'm saying if that's where you're prioritizing on a weekly basis, it's costing you significantly. So with all of this, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open it up to any questions anyone may have. I have a lot more material that I'm happy to cover. But I want to see if this has spurred any questions or if you had some questions coming into the game. Steve? Yeah, anyone, if you have a question, you can see you can raise your hand over there and we can pull you up. So, uh, questions. Anything you want to highlight, Carl? Uh, Mark, I was going to say, why don't you talk about the bullet points for a minute? Because I think that's a... That's a key part of, a, of, the, of what we've put together and, and, and having these bullet points. And again, it's a part of the process 
and, and you don't need to go through every one of the bullet points, but uh, but the, but all the bullet points in, in this sales process uh, that we've come up with. Well, Carl's referring to the meet and greet um, and, and, and into the transition of the discovery. And in your industry, one of the things that became very apparent to me many years ago, very quickly, was that some industries, you have a very distinct separation between a meet and greet or introduction, as you might find that described in, let's say, in business to business sales, selling advertising, selling insurance. But in retail, we use the term meet and greet. Okay, same thing as an introduction. But that meet and greet, has specific bullet points to it that you want to be consistent with every time. And we also discovered that where in business to business sales, you had a, a great distinction between the, the introduction and the discovery, not necessarily true in the retail industry. The two can be combined when, when they're done so artfully. So let's give you an example. Uh, I'm gonna take you down the path of what we might do uh, for your industry. Welcome to ABC Mattresses. Have you been into one of our stores before? Why is that critical? And that's one of the bullet points. Why is that critical? One, I want to know if that customer has had a previous experience with us. Are they a previous customer? That's a good thing for us. That gives us an upper hand. All right, if they had a positive experience. Or maybe they didn't have a good experience. And I need to turn that around so I know what to focus on while I'm in their company. Um, have you been into one of our locations before? Also may mean when you have multiple locations as a retailer, it may be, and industry uh, research has shown this, that they can go, and we've seen it with Carl's company, they can go to two or three more stores. More often than not, uh, they will have gone to three of his seven locations uh, for these high ticket sales before they pull the, pull the trigger. And we've seen it. We've seen it. It's true. And they often will not tell you that they've been to one of your other stores because now they're playing one manager uh, against the other on negotiating a better price, that type of situation. You may have seen this yourself. But have you been into one of our locations before? So we've got the answer on this. All right. Well, are you looking for a king or queen today? Or what size mattress are you looking for? You could ask that question either way. We're going to focus in really quickly on what that need is. Is this mattress going to be for you or for somebody else? We want to know that up front. What's going to be for me and my wife? Well, interestingly enough, I noticed quite quickly the wife isn't present. Okay. And so I, I, I want to identify the authority that this individual has as soon as possible and know what I'm working with and know how to lead this customer so that I can get rid of that objection at the end. Well, I got to, have, I got to bring my wife back in. See, sometimes there's truth to that. Sometimes he's been assigned or she's been assigned the initial scouting. And they're not going to make a decision until both get in. So my job is to sell them on the value of my company and the product that I carry. And they'd be crazy out of their mind to go anywhere else, give them such an incredible experience, give them the level of education they need that I've, I've created a rapport through service. And I'm not talking by talking small talk. I'm talking through service and the experience that they've been provided so that that man or that woman wouldn't think of taking their spouse anywhere else because they've been educated, they've been treated right, they know they're not going to be forced into a sale or pressured. Nobody wants pressure. So we teach you how to approach it uh, creatively or uh, through articulate uh, methodology that wins the customer over. Yes, you're closing them, but they never felt like they were being closed. Now, here's another example. Um, let me give you some verbiage on that, uh, that that we might run up against. So I'm dealing with Steve. Steve walked in. And notice I didn't ask him his name up front when he walked in the store. And I didn't, I didn't give him mine. And I'll tell you why. There's too much focus on that. The society that we live in today, fast pace for the better part and the majority of the markets, um, uh, people, um, people are, are tired of being sold. They're tired of, uh, you know, notice I put it in the title of my books. I apologize for my language, but no bullshit. People are tired of the bullshit. They want straightforward talk. They want service, and they want to know that you really care about them. The market's too competitive today to come across uh, with that old, uh, you know, the, the sales persona. So the thing is, if 
if that customer comes in, he's not going to remember, she's not going to remember my name uh, three minutes later until I have given them a reason to remember my name. And that means I have to build value. And I've, I've got only so many minutes, just a few brief minutes to make that first impression and to build that value. And then I'm going to introduce who I am and I'm going to ask them for their name. So first is, have you been into one of our locations or welcome to XYZ or in this instance, Mattress Warehouse? All right. Have you been into one of our locations before? And is this mattress or what size mattress are you looking for? Is this mattress for you or for somebody else? Well, it's going to be for me and my spouse. Well, I noticed that your spouse isn't with you today. So it looks to me like you were assigned the preliminary scouting responsibility. Is that right? Yeah, that's on me. And so I'm, see, if I get pushy with them, I say, well, is, is your wife going to need to be here at this moment for, I'll find that out in the right time. What I'm going to tell them is I've been where he's at or I've been where she's at. And I get it. And I'll tell you what, what we're going to do is we're going to look after you. All right. And when we get done here today, if, if, do you have anything preventing you from investing 15 to 20 minutes to find the, the perfect mattress? That's going to be one of the bullet points up front and quickly. Why? How many times have you gotten into a process with a customer and the next thing you know is that customer's looking at their watch. I got to run and pick up my children from school. All right. You need to know these things up front, and we're going to teach you how to know these things, and we're going to teach you how to then respond from there. Um, those are just a few of the initial bullet points. We've got a whole series of bullet points. This is simple. It's easy. Um, once you learn it, you need to practice. You need to be rehearsed. Your people need to practice. They need to be rehearsed. Listen, the background I come from, they would scout and they would videotape our performance in the field. That's how seriously it was taken. And we had to look back at ourselves and we had to be evaluated by a team of upper management. And eventually I had that responsibility in my career to be evaluating others. Every little thing you do adds up to the bottom line of increasing your margins, increasing your conversion ratio. It's that simple. So I've given you a few of those bullet points at uh, Carl's Beckoning today. You follow through those bullet points, you become rehearsed, your customer will never know. It's fresh. It's exciting every time. You're so well rehearsed, you don't miss a beat, and you're not flying by the seat of your pants. And that's the problem in sales. People don't take this as, serious, as seriously as they should. It's a science combined with the arts. All right? And so they fly by the seat of their pants, and that will, that will lead you to a crash and burn scenario far more often than you would like. Hey Mark, I hate to uh, I yeah. hate to interrupt here, but you we're we're running up against time, and I I notice we're we're dropping a few uh, people that are watching. So I just okay, well, thank you for letting me know. I, uh, I hope this has been beneficial for everybody today. Oh, it's it's been great, and I appreciate you guys putting it together. Uh, a couple questions that I've got is what is this uh, mattress sales module? How does somebody get it? How much does it cost? And uh, is it online? Is it? They, they can, yes, yes. It, it's it's available on a, online, and um, but they they have to arrange with our books are available online. Our audio books um, and our our electronic copies are available online at markmaxon.com. That's the author website. All right, they can learn about our testimonials by going to themaxongroup.com, which also will take them to markmaxon.com. Um, the mattress warehouse module would be electronically supplied to them via uh, their request. And all they have to do is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow the, these individuals, welcome them, invite them to reach out to me directly today. Uh, they can reach me on my personal number, and that's 801-808-5433. That's 801-808. 808-5433. If they call me, they miss me, please leave a message. I always get back. And we can talk a little bit about this. Let's make sure this module's right for you. I would have some discovery analysis, and discovery analysis uh, that I would want to conduct with you and find out if this was perfect for you. If it's perfect, I'll be happy to make the recommendation. I can take you through some price points of what we have available. Um, and uh, in addition to that, I think we were going to do a giveaway today 
on the books. Uh, we've got, uh, for the attendees, we're going to give away to one attendee of today's uh, meeting a copy of uh, No Bullshit Selling and No Bullshit Success uh, available on markmaxon.com, also on Amazon, incidentally, and uh, soon to be Ingram Sparks with Barnes & Noble and so forth. But um, we can give away, we'll, we'll send out an email. Steve, once you select a winner, we'll send out an email invite. We'll give them the link. They can go to the link and they'll have a password or code that they can download these books once so they get into the I'm shop. I'm going to keep the giveaway simple. So the easiest way to win is the first person to raise their hand right now. I'm watching the screen. The first person that raises their hand is the winner. It looks like Greg from Greg's Mattress Outlet was first. Robert was second. Close, but no cigar, Robert. I tell you what I'm going to do, Steve. Both of them. I'm going to take care of both of them today because they did get those hands up, okay? So if you would... Sorry, say, Patrick, you were third. That's the first loser today. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, guys, I want to thank you for raising your hands and your interest. And, and I'm glad you are. Um, you know, I have enough to keep me busy in life. I know what this does for businesses. Uh, I love helping people. I love helping people achieve success. And I've taken startups. And today I have clients that personally take home, you know, a million, a million five a year. And that's personal income. So it's exciting to be a part of all that. And I look forward to being uh, some influence in your world and some support in your world. So, Steve, what we, what we can do is if you get me over their information, I will send them an email invite with those links and they can download these. They can download both, both books, electronic and audio. Okay. And, and that's free. And if they, if they love what they're seeing, I hope they'll get to Amazon over there and help me drive my rankings on this new book because uh, we're going we're going after a best-selling list status. Oh. I saw your mouth moving, but I didn't hear anything. So I'm guessing that's just computer lag there. Okay. No, no, I'm, I'm good. And I want to thank everybody for the opportunity to be with you today. I hope each and every one of you came away with a little something, um, maybe, maybe a great uh, golden nugget in there. Um, I assure you, uh, once you get to know us and we have the opportunity to work for you, you'll find out that you've discovered an entire gold mine of wealth of information. We'd love to support you. Hey, Greg, if you'll shoot me that email, uh, your email address, the winner. So we got Greg and Robert. I have Greg and Robert. Um, I know I have Robert's email, but if you'll shoot me your email to Steve at BoiseMattress.net, I'll uh, forward that on to Mark. Uh, just to wrap up, Mark, Carl, uh, appreciate you guys today. Again, we'll, uh, we'll get this video uploaded. And, and hopefully we can drive some interest and at least drive some interest to your bookmark. Uh, I'll go, I'll go buy the Amazon copy to help drive that. Well, Steve, thank you. I, I know you'll enjoy it. i tell you what, it, it just, it just do this. Let me know you've done it. I'll send you the electronic links too. Okay. Awesome. But, but, but do me a favor. I appreciate that. Everybody that does get on there and buy the book, it's going to drive the rankings of the book, get it to a bestseller status. And that means we're going to reach more people. And in and, and my opinion, we want the public to have the best, um, uh, what I'm looking for, the, uh, the best experience possible in every sales encounter, because that's how they view us as sales people, you know, based upon previous experiences they've had. And my goal is to take this to a standard of professionalism that rival the, uh, you know, the professional sector, such as physicians. And, and how seriously they're taken, or attorneys, how seriously they're taken. We're consultants, and that's how we should be looked at. So the more we drive this, the better it's going to be for all of us. I hope you agree. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Carl. Yep, thank you, Steve. My pleasure. I also accepted you to the group, Mark, so feel free to post anything in there as well. Oh, Have thank a great you. day, guys. Okay. You take good care. Pleasure.